Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heap. Um, hey, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. I know I did. Uh, got to see the kids and some other family. Always wonderful. And you know, every every family's got that uh, you know that weird Uncle Joe. You know the guy. He's he's the menace. Let's see, my family doesn't have that, right? Well, at least not from my perspective. Because hey, huh, I'm the weird Uncle Joe. Anyway. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so I've cleaned up the uh, saddle casting here and it's ready to go back together. And really I didn't find a whole lot wrong with it other than it was uh, exceptionally dirty, right? And uh, I was uh, um, had a uh, socket head cap screw for the saddle, uh, saddle clamp and Wally G from uh, Florida was uh, uh, so very kind to send me one so Wally thank you again man you you have been a blessing in, in ways that I can't really describe so I want to do this in um, in a couple little segments so as not to you know not to drive ourselves crazy here I'm going to uh, we're gonna put the uh, ways clamps back on uh, to the uh, back onto the saddle we'll start the gib screws and then uh, you know we'll get a shot of a good shot of oil in here and then uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, oil up the uh, the ways and and get it slid in position and then kind of put it together from there. So that's kind of the game plan. So hopefully um, you know I don't uh, mess this up too bad. So as you recall, there's uh, two ways clamps. There's a front and a rear. Okay, uh, the rear ways clamp um, is the uh, uh, the wider one, and the front one where the uh, where the uh, feed screw goes is the larger one. So now they have uh, they do have shims in them to um, um, to take up any uh, up and down travel in the um, uh, from the uh, saddle to the uh, to the ways. So I, I do want to say this. Um, you know I know a lot of people will buy parts and stuff from um, eBay and stuff, and and I I do it too. Uh, just keep in mind that. Uh, what you're looking for is a nice smooth uh, uh, sliding fit, obviously, um, uh, with as little play as you can get up and down, um, but not so tight that it binds and where it's pinching and binding. So if you're buying a used saddle or something like that from eBay, uh, keep that in mind. And, and uh, I think uh, if I can remember, or maybe if you guys can remind me uh, I'll show you a way that maybe you can measure that and kind of determine the shim thickness someone did ask me the shim thicknesses and I did uh, I think one is four thousandths and one is um, six thousandths I posted that uh, in a comment on uh, um, not my not this past video but the one just before that so um, so if you guys uh, are interested in how to possibly measure that let me know and um, we'll go from there so let me see if I got this right. I believe this is the front one. You can't get them mixed up because the screw spacings are different. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to line the, uh, and this is, I've oiled this real well with some 20 weight oil. Uh, line this up, set, set the clamp down on here, and get some screws in here. Now I bought, uh, you remember I was uh, missing a couple Philister head screws. So I went ahead and got a hold of Fasten All, if I can find the hole there. Um, and I ordered some, what's going on here? Oh, not quite lined up. I think my arm's in your way too, so I'll apologize for that. Uh, so I contacted Fasten All and ordered some stainless steel quarter 20 by three quarter inch Philister head screws. Now, as far as I know, there's no issues of uh, screwing stainless steel into cast iron. If somebody knows better, please let me know. All right. Let's get these tightened down. I really need a larger screwdriver than the one I got, but this is kind of the largest one that I got handy without going and digging and digging. So I'm going to get those good and snug. Okay, so that's that one. So let's spin it around here. And uh, this is the rear. So this is the wider clamp. And by the way, you know, you can't get them mixed up because uh, there's the screw spacing on, um, 
on these are quite different. So let's get this. This one is a little more springy, so I'll have to probably play with it a little bit. do it like this okay. get a thread or two started All right. voila pretty simple Get these snugged up. Okay, uh, the next thing going there are my Gib adjusting screws. They're dog pointed screws and I'm just going to uh, get them started because I, you know, we'll adjust the or I will adjust the uh, the gib once uh, once I have the saddle on the ways. What's going on here? Hopefully I got everything here in frame. Like I said, I'm just, just getting these started. <clears throat> okay, so um, the only other piece that is left is the uh, is the uh, weight clamp, but I'll wait till I get it on the um, bed. And then of course I have the, uh, the gib. So, I'm um, just going di to uh, digress here just for a minute. Um, it's been suggested to me uh, by uh, a few people now that, uh, um, you know, because I don't have any proper whey oil, that uh, you can use uh, a bar and chain oil. So that's what I've uh, opted to do. And, and I've just marked my canned whey to remind me that, uh, that that's what I have in here. And this is what I'll use to... Uh, uh, lubricate uh, the slides and and the um, and the saddle uh, down the bedways and that sort of thing. Now, unless there's some real compelling reason not to use this stuff, it's uh, super easy to get a hold of. Um, it's cheap, you know, and uh, uh, so that's that's why I'm gonna use. So, unless there's uh, some real compelling reason not to use it, uh, let me know. All right, so I want to get a little bit in here. I probably should have uh, squirted it on there before, but I think we'll be okay. All right, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, oil up the ways, rub them down, give them a good coat of oil, and then... Um, when I get, uh, I'll reposition the camera and we'll come back after uh, I've got the uh, ways oiled up. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, with the uh, saddle loosely assembled here, I'm going to slide it onto the, onto the ways and I've got, the, uh, got it oiled. You can tell it's quite slippery. And then I'm going to take the gib and I know you guys can't really see this. I've marked the bottom of it with a black line because there is a little bit of height difference. We'll go ahead and slide the gib in. Matter of fact, I'm going to just give it a little bit of oil here. <clears throat> now, when I oiled my ways, I did make sure that um, I uh, 
I uh, got you know uh, the sides and the back and the whole ball of wax. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to uh, insert the give screws until they just touch. And uh, I'm going to adjust the give for a nice, easy sliding motion on here. And then uh, if uh, you want to see uh, a good example of this, check out Mr. Pete. He uh, shows you how to adjust gibs uh, on the Atlas lathe. And I don't think there's a, a better instruction instructor for doing that. Um, so I'll leave you to go look at that rather than me try to explain it. So... All right, well, I'll uh, come back and when I got these adjusted and we will um, uh, come back uh, to the front of it and finish, finish assembling this. So I'll catch you in just a second. Okay, guys, we're back. So I've adjusted these Gibbs screws until there's no play and I got a nice smooth uh, motion. And I tell you what, uh, the uh, bar and chain oil is uh, pretty slippery stuff and it is uh, kind of uh, sticky and stringy kind of like uh, what I've seen uh, whale oil is supposed to be. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the uh, clamp while I still can. So you'll see that uh, the screw uh, screws close to one edge and uh, the part that extends out actually extends out over the ways. So get that in. Maybe. I don't have my big head in the way. All right. <clears throat> and it should tighten down with our tool post wrench. Maybe. Hmm, that's not clamping. I'll take a closer look at that, see what's going on here. Oh, I see it's spent. It's spun around. Oh, interesting. The uh, problem that I'm having is that the clamp is hitting, this clamp is hitting the, the way clamp, or you know, the ways clamp. Tell you what, now this is a clamp and a bolt that I got from Wally. Let me go get my, the other clamp piece and uh, see if there's a difference there. So hold tight, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So this is my old clamp. You remember it had a hex head, I mean socket head cap screw in it. I'm gonna take this one off and we're gonna compare it to the one I got from Wally. So if you can see that, this is the one I got from Wally here on the left. And you see it's pretty centralized and then you see the one that I had is really kind of offset to the left. So we're going to try this one here since it's offset. If it will clear the clamp ways. All right. So we're sliding good there. And we should be able to lock. And it's locked solid. Ah. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna to have to use my old clamp, which I guess doesn't really matter, uh, but it's kind of interesting. So uh, I wonder if when they assembled these things, if you know, if the piece was just kind of clamped in place, pushed up against the uh, ways, uh, the ways clamp, and then uh, just spotted and then drilled and tapped. You know, um, so obviously not a precision piece, and probably could be made very easily. So, all right, so we'll set that aside. All right, so with, uh, with the carriage lock in place and working with square head, I'm really happy about that. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, 
get the uh, cross feed screw back in and, and again I remember I told you that I've, I've oiled this stuff pretty good so we'll start off with um, this nut that goes in here and remember that uh, you didn't have to take it apart like I did you know you could have just gotten your inch and 3 8 wrench broke this loose and removed the whole assembly but like I said I just wanted to clean everything up so we have the screw so let's uh while we're here get some get some oil on it and if I don't get it all over the place you know like that uh, <laughs> get some oil on there let's get a little oil on this gear because it's going to be hidden okay and let's just slide that in like so okay and then recall the nut here slides on let's get some oil on there get that threaded in now there's a hole on top of this that i guess in theory should line up with uh this oil hole here. Now, when uh, Lyle Peterson, when Tubal Cain uh, put his in, uh, it didn't line up. He said it was all for naught. So I don't know if mine will or not, but we'll find out here. Yeah, let me find my big wrench. I think I got it down here hiding it. All right. So let's uh, get our big one and three quarter inch wrench. And I'm not going to be crazy with this. I'm just snugging it down real good. And my little barely visible index line is there on top. And when I look down, the hole that's drilled through this, um, yeah, it's not visible on mine either. So Mr. Pete, I guess, uh, I guess uh, maybe none of them line up, or at least the one that you... Uh, put on YouTube and mine uh, those holes don't line up so okay so uh, the next part here is the micrometer dial slides on and then we have a 9 16 inch nut okay now You really need a thin wrench to get back there. We have a have a Woodruff key goes in. And of course the handle. Of course this is not the handle that uh, originally went, you know, to the cross slide. Normally it's got a single like a ball handle. Um, if anybody's got one of those that they're willing to part with or sell, um, let me know. I could, cause this is kind of, I'd rather have this down on the apron and replace the other one. And, uh, and whatnot. So, all right. So my collar is free. I've got, try to limit the end play as much as I can. And, hmm, I need something thinner than that. Okay. So. I'm going to have to look around. Oh, this is a, there we go. So I want the, I want to be able to tighten this up. Now this, uh, I thought was a five eighths, but it's, it's, uh, my five eighths doesn't fit it. So this is going to get the magic wrench. And snug that up. All right. So yeah, and this handle's bent too. But I guess I'll have to have to deal with it. And okay, so that's back together. And uh, the next uh, part is um, the apron. So um, let me cut out and come back and we'll put the uh, apron back on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the apron here. And uh, before I put this on, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get these gears with a um, um, with a little bit of gear oil because you know there's a well, I'm going to explain this um, or at least point it out. You, know, you have a Gitz oiler right here that will oil this shaft that uh, opens and closes the half nuts. So all is good, right? You have a Gitz oiler here that will, in theory, 
cause oil to run down this channel into a hole and lubricate this, uh, this shaft right here. And finally you have another Gitz oil oiler right here on the end that will lubricate this shaft. Okay, so all is, all is well and wonderful. You also note that there's a hole in this, this stud that holds this on which will, and then this, uh, this bolt or the stud is cross drilled to allow oil to get to the inside of this shaft. Okay. And then on top of the top of the saddle, there's two oil holes, right? There's one oil hole here that's supposed to allow you to lubricate or to allow to lubricate the inside of this nut that your cross, you know, that your feed screw fits through. And then the other one, of course, drips down onto, uh, onto that gear, which, you know, when it's in mesh with this gear should lubricate right here. But you notice that there's just no real great way that I've seen yet, uh, or, or has been pointed out to me to lubricate these bevel gears. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of gear oil and work those around just so I know that it has some nice sticky oil on there and hopefully not too much in the way before I put it together here and I'm also going to do the same thing over here where these gears are driven just want to get some beer oil in there. Hopefully I got you in frame. I think a little more. Alright. And then I'm going to get some on this one here where it engages with the rack. Okay. So, um, there are two pens that that extend down from the saddle that will catch these two holes like so and then there are two large Philister head screws that attach the saddle on So, let me uh, find a big screwdriver, drive them down, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here, and I'm going to apply some upward pressure on here. These screws aren't really great shape, and my screwdriver really isn't big enough. But hopefully, it'll be big enough to get these tightened up and pulled up on the pins. So those are those are in there, and that's seated. I'll uh, find a bigger screwdriver, uh, maybe or uh, an impact driver, and drive them down. I don't want to. I don't run. I don't want to run them. So look, I think that's enough for this video. Um, obviously, we need to get the uh, cross slide on and the uh, compound, and uh, the saddle will be pretty much done. Other than, of course, getting the lead screw back installed. So look, we're getting close. I guess I can't, uh, I can't put off the inevitable too much longer. I'm going to have to learn how to use this machine. And boy, I tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I'm excited to, uh, to see, you know, what I can do and learn what I can't do, and you know, and uh, make something, make something nice. So you know, um, and like I said, once the machine's together, I think those videos will probably go into the, uh, into the uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, shop student videos because like I said I've never never done any metal work before I'm a computer geek by trade um, and uh, I look forward to 
to uh, to working on this. Now the only other thing that I want to say about the saddle is that I do have, uh, and I think I showed this, I do have uh, wipes, way wipers uh, for it. I'm going to see if I can find some felts first. There's a guy on eBay I think sells a felt and rubber replacement kit for about 12 bucks. I'm probably going to order that um, and replace these, although I will put them on. Um, uh, to uh, see the felts and the uh, rubbers that are available, uh, Chris Anderson done a uh, video where he replaced his, so um, he done he done a good job on it. So I'll, I'll refer you to him, and I'm going to try to use this card thing if I can remember uh, to go, you know, see it. So there you go, Chris. Uh, and then uh, I did get some 832 uh, socket head uh, screws to put in these oil plugs here. So so we're good on that and. Um, Hey, look, thanks uh, for taking the time to watch and your patience with me. I know I, I stammer and stutter a lot. But, you know, I'm, I think I'm getting a little bit more comfortable. I just uh, can't believe how great uh, the YouTube community is. You know, both the uh, the viewers, um, the subscribers, and, and, and mostly the content creators. Man, that, they uh, I tell you what, guys, if you've never created a video for YouTube, um, you're in it for a treat. It's uh, it's a lot of work, you know. You setting up lights and cameras, and then trying to video, you know, at a good angle, and then mix the stuff together, and you know, it's just a lot of work. And I'm boy, I'm horrible at it. But anyway, thanks for being patient with me. So other than that, I uh, hope you had a wonderful uh, Christmas, and I hope you have a great New Year. And um, other than that, have a blessed day.